When Christine and Calvin saw this house, Christine immediately fell in love with it. It was a classic garden district home, yellow and white with blue-gray shutters. The ceiling of the wraparound porch was painted haint blue. Families in the South had named it that, in reference to the color favored by the Gula, a tribe from West Africa that had been placed along the coast of North Carolina and Georgia. The folklore was that the color would stop the haints, which are spirits, from crossing your doorway or coming back into your home once they'd left. This had spread through the South, and some people also believed that it kept away bees, but that was probably more to what the paint had been made of than the actual color. Calvin wasn't thrilled about the blue. When they closed on the house, he and Christine talked about it and decided to paint it yellow like the rest of the home. Not long after they were settled in, a couple of the neighbor ladies began coming over with baked goods. This was something that Christine loved about New Orleans. Everyone was so friendly. However, she'd always ask them to come in for tea, but they seemed a little shy or nervous. She couldn't quite put her finger on it. On the sixth day, a woman, Lisa, came wearing a lemon tart. Christine asked her to come inside, but she requested to sit on the porch. Oh, it's such a nice day, said Lisa. Do you mind if we stay out here on the porch? Christine asked if she wanted some sweet tea, which she did, and she told her to make herself right at home while she went and got the tea, along with the plates and silverware for the tart. They had a nice time chatting. Christine liked her very much. And after they'd gotten comfortable, Lisa asked, Do you mind if I speak out of turn? Christine couldn't imagine what she had to say that could be seen as rude, so she said of course she didn't mind. Well, Lisa began, We've been asked by some of the neighbors to inquire about why you covered over the haint blue, if you don't mind me asking. Of course I don't, replied Christine, although she did think it a strange question to ask. My husband wasn't fond of it. He prefers the yellow, so we talked about it and agreed that if it made him happier to paint it, then why not? Why? Lisa began. It's just that I know it seems old-fashioned, but a lot of us still have that small little superstition about painting the ceiling in haint blue. Some folks say it makes them a tad nervous to come over and to come into your home to welcome you. That's all. Oh, I really hadn't put much thought into that superstition thing. I didn't realize that people still believed in all that. I mean, not that I think it's silly or anything. We're just not superstitious people. I see, said Lisa. Well, I'm just saying that it does make some people a bit anxious. You know, not that I'm telling you how to paint your house and such. She just trailed off. Well, I should probably get going, she said. Can you just maybe consider changing the color back? She asked Christine. Well, I can talk it over with Calvin, but I really can't promise anything. Okay, then, said Lisa. Please do that. She stood up, and Christine stood up. They had barely sipped their tea and hadn't even touched the tart that Christine had placed on their plates. Her good china. She wanted to be seen as a good hostess. Right. Okay, then. Well, have a nice day, Christine said as Lisa walked away. Have a nice day, Lisa replied. Christine began cleaning up. Okay, that was odd, she thought to herself. When Calvin got home, she went right into telling him about her day and her encounter with Lisa. No, I'm not going to change it back to that color. This is ridiculous. I can't even believe that she brought the subject up. I know, honey, I do. But now I feel like we're not making a good first impression. And I just, I just want our new neighbors to like us. I get that, baby, I do. But I also don't want to start down a path where we have to conform to every little wish they have. We're allowed to have the house we want and the color we want it. Yeah, yeah, you're right, said Christine. And she kissed him on the cheek. Let's get ready for bed, he said. And before long, they were both sound asleep. During the night, Calvin rode over and placed his arm around his wife's waist. He felt something warm and sticky. Christine? 
Christine. He reached over to turn on his bedside lamp and saw that Christine was soaked in blood, as was his hand. He jumped up and rolled her onto her back. Both wrists had deep cuts. Christine! he yelled. But there was nothing. He immediately called an ambulance. As he was standing next to his wife's hospital bed, the nurse was checking her vitals. She would be fine, but it had been a close call. He was making small talk with the nurse when he mentioned that they'd only recently moved here. The nurse asked him where they were living, and when he told her, the nurse's face turned stark white. "'What's wrong?' asked Calvin. "'You live in old Doc Trudeau's place?' she asked. "'Yes, yes, I, uh, I believe that was a previous owner. Did you know him?' "'Yes,' she said, still pale, looking frightened. "'What is it?' asked Calvin. "'Was, uh, was your wife—' "'Was she depressed before moving?' asked the nurse. "'No, of course not,' shot back Calvin. "'She wasn't depressed. She's not depressed now,' he explained. "'I have no idea what happened to her.' "'Oh,' she said softly. "'Calvin demanded to know what she wasn't telling him. "'Well,' she started, "'it's just that Doc Trudeau, well, he was found in that house.' Both of his wrists were slit. Calvin was stunned in a silence. The nurse stared back at him. He sat down in his chair. Then, he picked up his cell phone and called the painter. Yes. Paint it. Yes. I need it done by tomorrow. I don't care what it costs. Right. Right. Paint blue.